Investigation report of Human Action Plan B on reinforcement of 10 Val 7. Interview transcript 03. Interview officer, IO. State your name and rank for the record. Subject, Vilmar Battlecast Madak, second echelon warrior. IO. Battlecast Madak, you were involved in the final assault on 10 Val 7, correct? Subject. I was on the dropship alongside the first wave of humans when they first landed, yes. I.O. Battlecast Madak, can you describe the human unit you and your warpod were attached to? Subject. Be warned, sir. They are not what we... the entire galaxy had expected. I.O. That is why I'm here. Vilmar Battlecast Madak knew warriors, and humans are no warriors. Madak was no stranger to combat and the beings who waged it. Much like the rest of the galaxy's more war-focused sentience, they found humanity's offerings to the Confederation of Worlds to be... underwhelming. He and his war pod of 64 strong, under the divine command of 4th Echelon Battle Priest Deton Act, had completed four combat operations with minimal casualties. Most of his pod brethren beside him had been there since they had hatched many cycles ago. They were a respectable people among the lower castes in Vilmar society, and viewed favourably by their betters for their unwavering service to the High Queen. Humans, however? Well, they are squishy for one. Their small stature speaks of weaker strength, and their lack of digitigrade limbs hint at slower speed. They lack any sort of natural weapons, no claws or large teeth of any kind. How such a species has survived, let alone thrived on a death row, was beyond him. Subject. In hindsight, that... should have been the first clue. Still, the humans should be commended for their bravery, no matter how foolish it was in volunteering to reinforce the flagging confederation forces, locked in a losing battle for the Tenval system was a virtual death sentence. So the question was, what were the humans doing here with their rock throwers and useless, squishy bodies? When he pointed this out to his fellow pop brethren, caused much amusement, as they cleared their glaive carbines, both eager and anxious for the coming battle. One of his pop brothers chortled and said, I heard something about that actually. It turns out the humans evolved from something called a Pursuit Predator. They would literally walk their prey to death. This brought about another bout of laughter. Madak knew warriors. So, how foolish he thought, for a warrior to fight by... walking. Who are we? A creature of dark, angle and metal snarled, perched atop the catwalk on a confederate transport's hangar bay. Its voice warped and distorted, hellish and evil. Drop troopers! Drop troopers! Bade back the demonic horde. Their old slug throwers thrust into the air in ravenous celebration of what is to come. And what do we do? The monstrous biped bent to the waist, bellowing down to his men. The venomous sneer heard even through his helmet's crackling microphone. Kill! 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 The Terran demons pumped their fists in time with their chant, as if reciting some hellish prayer. Let's take him to church, hell jumpers! Hooah! The horde roared their refrain in perfect thunderous unison. The human leader's armoured fists clanged against his waist as he tilted his head back and let out a bone-chilling cackle surrounded by his horde of cheering killers. And Madak and his warpods standing, Reed cowering, at the rear of the hangar. Well, no one was laughing anymore. I.O. Drop? Troopers? Can you explain what those are? Subject. <laughs> Before 10 Val 7, I would tell you they were the criminally insane or societal outcasts, quite literally ejected from their ships in low orbit, like refuse to die in the battlefield below. I O. Oh. And what would you tell me now? Subject. I would tell you I was half right. This orbit jumper dropship was, Maldek decided, an affront to aerospace engineering. What kind of self-respecting sentient species would pack over 20 troops, soldiers to shoulder in a box clearly designed for half that number, strap on a few chemical engines, weld on a couple of ancient bolt throwers, then set it hurling down into a planet's atmosphere on purpose? Well, the humans of course. All passengers be advised, we will be within range of the Galactic Power Space Defense Grid on 10 Vel 7 in T-5 minus minutes. The primitive vehicle lurched to the side as it hurtled towards the planet below. The small arms stowed in the overhead racks rattled and lights flickered. The orbit jumper's engines rose to a howl, deafening even through Maldak's sealed helmet. Hey, Scare Bear. One of the humans, Sergeant Morgan, according to the nameplate in his armour, called him over the open comm link. You think those Siegebreaker warpads of yours took out those planetary anti-air cannons? 
Vilmar's siege breakers are among the best the Confederation of Worlds has to offer, human. If they cannot defeat those cannons your primitive weapons and vehicles had little hope for... Wait. My dad cocked his helmeted head. Did you just address me as... a scare bear? It's because your battle cast types look like bipedal insectoid teddy bears. The human chuckled, even as the orbit jump had lurched again. Out of context, you're a fucking nightmare fuel. My dad could hear a snort over the channel. No offence. Chuckles from the rest of the human troopers trickled in over comms. Most amusing, Madak stated flatly, for fleshy bone maggots with delusions of grandeur. A pregnant pause. No offence. That, for some reason that was lost in the Vilmar, had the humans roaring in laughter. Especially Sergeant Morgan. Oh, so the teddy bear actually has teeth. Madak went to respond when the lights flipped blood red, and everyone was thrown violently against their restraints. The pilot's voice cut through the engine's deafening roar, as its manoeuvring thrusters kicked in hard. Incoming fire from the planet's surface, everyone hang on to your butts, conducting evasive manoeuvres. Bloody hell, Sergeant Morgan snarled, his harness creaking beneath the strength of his gloved fists. The Vilmar around them trilled in distress as the G-forces spiked, pressing them into their seats painfully, the air being crushed from the lungs. Hey Scare Bear, what the fuck? Madak stared at the human sergeant in disbelief, shocked that he seemed relatively unaffected by the intense gravitational force pressing down upon them. I thought you said your Siege Breaker war pods were the best. Those fucking guns aren't taken out at all. We're all going to die! One of the Vilmar battle cars managed to wail through his compressed lungs. Over the comms, the entire human squad let out a collective groan. Ah, quit your whining, you pansy! Sergeant Morgan exclaimed, manipulating his helmet comlink. Helljumper actual, Helljumper actual, this is Helljumper 7-1. Our transports are under heavy plasma flank from the planet's surface. Helljumper 7-1, this is Helljumper Actual. We're pretty fucking aware. Planetary scans just came in. Vilmar's siege breaker forces appear to have been routed. Seems the poor bastards didn't even manage to land before they were blasted out of the air. Every trooper, human and Vilmar, was struck silent. Madak closed his eyes and leaned his head back against his seat. 640 of the Vilmar Monarchy's best, armed with some of the Confederation's most advanced stealth systems, and they couldn't even touch the ground. What chance did 64 Vilmar and a hundred something squishy humans in flying boxes have? It was over. Fuck it, came a gruff sigh from Sergeant Morgan. Every being in the dropship looked over as the human keyed his comlink. Hey, boss man, are you going to make the call or should I? Morgan, fine. Just shut up and have you and your people pull up their big boy pants. The voice on the other end sighed. Execute plan B. Something in the air about the human drop troopers shifted. A weight that seemed to scratch at the back of Madak's neck, setting his fight or flight instincts alight. His fellow Vilmar leaned as far away from the human sitting beside them as their restraints would allow. Unease nipped at Madak's ears, sharp and gleeful. As if the squishy human sitting beside them had suddenly been replaced by uncaged predators. I O. What was plan B? Nothing in the official documents provided to the Confederation of Worlds War Council details such an outline. Subject. The plan was rejected by the Vilmar and other commanders involved in the initial planning phase. Too risky. A waste of resources and warriors. According to Battle Priest Detonak, who was at the meeting, he thought the human's proposal to be an outrageous joke. A bit of lunacy on the human's part. I O. Well, was it? Subject. Oh, it absolutely was, but... It worked. I O. What happened next? Subject. Hmm. <laughs> What do you think? The Vilmar watched on in equal past confusion and trepidation as the humans unharnessed and stood up. Their map boots anchored them to the floor under the orbit jumper's evasive maneuvers as they gathered their equipment in a practice methodical manner. Madak spotted Sergeant Morgan, strapped firmly in an exoskeleton reinforced by plates of camouflage composite and what appeared to be retro thrusters, march over to the orbit jumper's ramp controls. What do you think you are doing? Morgan looked back and passed the ramp seal release. Plan B. The ramp unsealed with a sucking groan, quickly drowned out by howling wind as only stardust from the Tenval star system's thin atmosphere spilled into the troop compartment, buffeting the Vilmar clinging to their restraints. Just outside the ramp rust tinted void stretched out into infinity, and below them lay Tenval 7, the massive planet's horizon line illuminated by the local star, peeking over the thick atmosphere. We are 18,000 clicks above the planet's surface! What exactly do you expect to do from here? Madak cried over the screaming wind and snarl of the orbit jumper's engines. Off in the near distance, a ball of sickly green plasma violently burst into a massive cloud of death. Sergeant Morgan didn't even blink before he burst into laughter as the transport tumbled sideways to avoid the plasma flag. 
Tenval's servant spinning wildly outside of the ramp behind him. The Vilmar groaned in pain as they were thrown around their seats, and their bodies crushed beneath the intense high G-force maneuvers. Once they leveled out, Sergeant Morgan asked, Scare Bear, has no one told you exactly why we humans have never developed capital ships before? Madak coughed, chest still heaving from the G-force pressure. Um, no. In fact, no one else really knew either. Every time the human's military representative would show up to a confederation meeting, they would either be disregarded, or, as more often the case, laughed out of the room like an impudent child, trying to join the adults as they talked. You very well may have your fancy stealth barges and wallocks and their over-engineered, overcompensating battleships, Sergeant Morgan roared over the howling wind. We got our armoured infantry. We got our orbit jumpers. We got our skybreaker railguns. We got our drop troopers. Hua! Bart Sergeant Morgan's men and women as they lined up in front of the door, bulky rifles in hand, and bloodless spilling out into the void. All your may have miles of space commerce centuries ago, Sergeant Morgan bade. His vicious grin, audible even overcomes, but ain't no one knows exoplanetary warfare like we do. Bewildered, Madak asked, 640 of our best could knock out those guns. What can just a hundred of you hope to do? We do what we do best, Sergeant Morgan laughed, then turned to his troopers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, go take a walk. After action report of human action plan B on reinforcement of Tenval 7. Total Confederation forces, 768. Vilmar forces, 640. Vilmar slain, 598. Vilmar wounded, 42. Human forces, 128. Human slain, 2. Humans wounded. 34. Total Galactic Powers Forces, 15,000. Estimate. GP Troops Slain, 3,531. Estimate. GP Troops Captured, 898. Galran Slain, 2,458. Estimate. Galran Captured, 1,226. Objectives. Disable four flak batteries on Northern Hemisphere. Three guns disabled, partial success. Disable four flag batteries on Southern Hemisphere. Two guns disabled, partial success. Capture Complex Rhine, successful. Capture Complex Qualda, successful. Other actions taken. Eliminated Garen War Marshal. Eliminated Garen Lieutenant War Marshal. Eliminated Garen System Secretary. Continue. Conclusion. Numerical error. Investigation initiated. After action report addendum. Investigation results. Numerical error rectified. Add 211 to Galactic Power Casualty Numbers. Add capture of Galactic Power's Hindlebrush Combat Hover Platform Blueprints to other actions taken. Additional notes. In future exoplanetary operations, recommend get out of the way and let the humans go for a walk.